It was a time where you were bored. Reggae toaster and rapper Pato Banton has known UB40 since the early days. He grew up near the band's digs in the Mosley area of Birmingham. You had a choice, you know. Really, you, you had a, a, a choice of getting into crime, um, you know, getting into all kinds of stupid stuff, or, you know, um, getting into education or getting into music. The other band members, they're friends, like-minded, who all loved the same music. There was just one problem. Not one of them knew how to play an instrument. So all of us and our equipment got into a van and went down to a local sort of uh, art centre place where we had hired a room to rehearse this band that we thought we were going to get together. And uh, it lasted about an hour and a half, didn't it? Because nobody could play or anything, you know. We were just, just you know, putting our feet in the water. It just kind of happened, really, because, I mean, we couldn't play anything at first. And like, We used to do, like, have a little punk session just to get rid of the frustration <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't play what got. and then we started working out like a few tunes the final lineup was said UB40 concentrated their full time efforts on learning to play reggae their way. they loved reggae music they grew up on reggae music and they had a, a passion to um to play it. They were signed by a local record label, Graduate Records, and their first album, Signing Off, was a hit. We would, had money for the first times in our lives. And, you know, you're famous, you have number one record on the TV, and you have these pocketfuls of money. Their first single, Food for Thought, was also their first instant success and headed straight for the top five. Such was the band's impact on their first major live audiences. They had a wicked vibe, you know, and the local community loved them, you know. And I think it was that black and white mix as well um, that, that gave it that extra edge. Our first record was a hit record and to our astonishment, you know, and, uh, and everywhere we went, there were just thousands of people come to see us. And they'd sing in the ch uh, our tunes. Well, Neil Diamond did a version of Red Red Wine on his tour. He does a reggae version now. And in the middle, he does it like a rap like Astro. Red Red Wine, it never be so fine. The heat may rock you all the time. And he goes, Red Red Wine, it makes you feel so good, even if the words aren't understood. <laughs> In 1983, the year UB40 would capture the hearts of millions around the world. It would mark the introduction of Flavor of Love, an album of covers, the songs they grew up listening to from reggae artists like Bob Marley, Tony Tribe, and Jimmy Cliff. When we decided to do Labour of Love, we were advised against it, you know, because that wasn't. So we started we with, the, with the band that wrote their own songs, you know, yeah. one in ten, you know. We were a political band, and we were saying, no, we're not, we're a reggae band, and the whole point for us is about reggae, you know. And we want to do these tunes so that everyone can see where we're coming from. Red, red wine. With hits like Red Red Wine, Cherry O Baby and Keep On Moving, Labor of Love was anything but a failure. It catapulted the band to international stardom. It went double platinum, staying in the charts for more than 100 weeks. From there, UB40 spent several more years at the top of the charts. UB40's challenge beginnings and their rapid rise to fame has endeared them to fans the world over, not to mention a huge fan base right here in San Diego. Good evening, San Diego! Coming up, an inside look at their recent tour through America's finest city, and then their home base 30 years later, how Birmingham, England reacts to their hometown heroes reaching worldwide fame. Where that came from, five That's British reggae group UB40 playing a recent sold-out concert in San Diego at Humphreys by the Bay on Shelter Island. Duncan Campbell, their new lead singer at the helm, the brother of both the former lead singer Ali Campbell and original lead guitarist Robin Campbell. It's a family affair of sorts, one that began in the late 1970s in Birmingham, England, a town that remains proud of its hometown heroes. Birmingham's new 96.4 BRMB. On the radio waves throughout Birmingham, Tammy Gooding, the afternoon radio presenter on the new BRMB, is heard by hundreds of thousands of music fans. As I grew up 
always loved UB40. My elder brother, elder sister used to like them, so I was introduced by them. She hears similar stories from listeners throughout the city. Hull, on the line to choose his anthem is Bobby. Hi, Bobby. What can I play for you? Actually, listeners and myself and Brummies generally feel a sense of ownership of UB40 as though they are like their best mates and therefore they will always support them and champion them down the years and they have done that and certainly here in Birmingham since you know new BRMB is the station for Birmingham it's going to happen here this is a platform for that if you like. UB40 among the most beloved musical acts to come out of Birmingham. They've exceeded my expectations because they are just the nicest down to earth lovely guys they are true Brummies and true to their roots. Their roots are right here, throughout the Birmingham area. Some of the poorest areas, actually, Balzo Heath, Mosley, where many band members attended the School of Art before they were musicians. It's the city where every band member was born and raised. Still today, their headquarters remains in the heart of the city, just a few blocks from what's known as City Center, a place many other successful acts have put behind them. Most of them have moved away, but UB40, at the height of their popularity, and, and they are so big now, still maintain, still live in Birmingham, still work in Birmingham, still want to be part of the Brummie scene, and still just to talk to them. They don't try to change their accents. They're proud to be Brummies, proud to be from Birmingham. UB40 has always been big, yeah. You know, it's been synonymous with radio and the whole of Birmingham, really. I think part of the success and the continued support in the area is because they've still kept the roots. You know, some people can criticise UB40 for various reasons, but you can't criticise the fact that they never forgot where they've come from. And most of them employees are people that they've grown up with. To sing along to? No. For the band members staying right here, remembering their roots as a band, keeping tabs with their friends has also helped them remain grounded. And also I'm with the same eight guys. I was with when I was 11 years old before we even hit puberty, you know. When we were virgins, we were together, all lying that we weren't. While much of their city remains the same, there's been a stark upward swing in the economy. In the 70s, unemployment was rampant. Harsh reality that helped breed a band with a keen social conscience. I mean, UB40, when you consider Ratty McKitchen, was a, a direct knock at, at Margaret Thatcher and her government. Margaret Thatcher was the rat in the kitchen. That's what they were saying. And Astro wrote it, you know I mean? He knew exactly what he was writing. So th th there's always been that working class roots <laughs> About a block away from Depp International Studios is another UB40 landmark, a pub called the Eagle and Ton. It was the backdrop to several music videos in the early 1980s and was also featured on two UB40 album covers, The Best of UB40 and The Best of UB40 Volume 2. <laughs> and you've had what? Today it remains a popular hangout for Brummies, but it's also become almost sacred ground to the UB40 faithful, loonies as they call themselves, just a stone's throw away from UB40's recording studios. A conversation here is very likely to quickly turn to the topic of UB40. The, the form of the music, the lyrics, it's almost like a struggle. I think that's where it all comes from and I think that's why Birmingham people relate to it a bit more. It, their music seems to be way ahead of its time when it was out anyway. Like that song now, the earth guy is screaming, that's playing in the background. If they release that now, it still makes so much sense. Like fame never really went to their heads or anything. They mixed with everybody else, you know, and um, just normal people really. Normal people who just happen to reach success beyond their borders without forgetting where they came from. Here they are, the boys themselves from Birmingham, UB40. Reggae's cradle to the grave, isn't it? That's what their music is, their interpretation of reggae is second to none. And this is a big area for reggae as well. It's probably the premier area in this country for reggae music. And I've heard the new album. And it's got to be fantastic. It's, no, I swear to you, I wouldn't lie to you, it's the best thing they've ever done. They're kind of coming full circle, and I think now is the time, if ever, considering the, the new album and the nature of it, the UB40 is suddenly going to be massive again. When we come back, my exclusive interview with Roger Daltrey and his thoughts of UB40 while in concert with UB40 at London's Royal Albert Hall. And also another listen to their recent concert right here in San Diego.